Hello, social media family. My name is Pastor Greg Ely, and I serve as the campus pastor for Colonial Presbyterian Church at our South Kansas City campus. This week is Holy Week, the week that takes us to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Each day, our pastors will be bringing you a devotional, walking you through the days of Jesus' journey to the cross. Today, I want to start with Jesus cleansing the temple. And we find this scene in Mark chapter 11, verse 15 through 19. It says, And they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it. They were seeking a way to destroy him, for they feared him because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. So we have just witnessed the triumphal entry of Jesus. The people line the streets and wave palm branches, declaring, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now the scene moves to the temple. Jesus walks in and no, he did not ask the usher, are there any seats down front? <laughs> he didn't come in and begin to awe at the creative structure of this building. He knew this place and he knew why this place was built. He knew this was his father's house and what he saw was not what his father had intended. What did Jesus see? He saw those who had made this temple into a shopping mall. There was a food court selling animals because the sacrifices had to be unblemished and many traveling uh, to worship and present their sacrifices would not be able to keep an unblemished lamb through the course of their pilgrimage. He saw a crooked banking system who would exchange the Greek and Roman currency into the Jewish currency that was necessary to pay the temple tax. Because the pictures on the other coins were of Greek and Roman figures and would be considered idolatrous because the figures did not represent God and he would not be accepted in the temple. He saw a trail of merchandisers who had made a shortcut from one end to the other to get their goods in place to be sold. All this being done in the court of the Gentiles. Theologians believe the Jews who are allowing this to happen figured this is the court of the Gentiles. Even though it is in the temple, the Gentile courts are meaningless and could be compromised without remorse. See, the anger Jesus shows is not just about the selling and the unbalanced beams uh, being used to cheat people out of their money or the exorbitant prices um, placed on these animals. If this was the case, he wouldn't have only ran out the sellers. But the text says he ran out the sellers and the buyers. Why? because it was more about the acceptance and tolerance of the corruption allowed in this holy place. This is the house of God, and there are no more or less holy places than others. In Jesus' eyes, the whole temple was the temple of God. That would be like the man who was baptized, and he asked if he could hold his wallet out of the water. The minister said, why? He said, because I'm ready to give my life to the Lord, but my pocketbook is not ready to make that change yet. <laughs> when you give your life to the Lord, your whole life becomes the temple of God, not certain areas of your life. You can't be a child of God on Sunday and a tyrant business leader on Monday. You can't be a praise and worship leader on Sunday and a horrible co-worker on Monday. The whole temple belongs to God. So Jesus, quoting Isaiah 56 and 7, says, Is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? Wait, hold the presses. You mean this is not my chance for a lucrative opportunity? No, this is your chance to submit to the Lordship of Christ. This quote from Jesus must also make us ask the question, What has the church become today? Has it become primarily a place to check on the revenues compared to the revenues of other churches? Has it become a place to primarily promote our businesses and build our networks? 
has become a place for us to find people that are struggling in their sin more than we are so we can feel better about ourselves. In this time of turmoil and, and, and war and political unrest and racism, are we still a house of prayer? Can people come through our doors and hear a word from the Lord? Can people from all nations enter in and feel welcome no matter what they look or sound like? I don't know about you, but that's why I'm here, because it's a house of prayer. That's why I go to the house of God. You see, I am a temple of God in the temple of God to promote the goodness of God so that all can experience the greatness of God. When the darkest hour comes, it is then that the church must surely show that we are still a house of prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word. And um, Father, we thank you for reminding us that your house, your church is a house of prayer. Help us also to remember that our temples are houses of prayer. Let us live our life every day with that in mind. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Thank you so much for joining today. Make sure you tune in tomorrow to hear Pastor Mark.